Good day, everyone. We are very pleased to see you again. And here is the Asian news with the latest update. With me, Vanessa. The president of the Philippines asks the United Nations not to refuse and hold on to the COVID-19 vaccine. Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte calls for universal access to a COVID-19 vaccine. In a pre-recorded video statement to the United Nations General Assembly, conducted virtually this year due to the coronavirus pandemic, when the world finds that vaccine, access to it must not be denied or withheld. We are at a crossroads. How we address COVID-19 will define our future. And a middle-income country whose economic advantages have been derailed by the pandemic, we welcome the launch of the UN COVID Response and Recovery Fund, ensuring universal access to anti-COVID-19 technologies and products is pivotal in the global pandemic recovery. The world is in the race to find safe and effective vaccine. When the world finds that vaccine, access to it must not be denied nor withheld. It should be made available to all rich and poor nations alike as a matter of policy. The Philippines joins our partners in the ASEAN and the non-aligned movement and in raising our collective voice, the COVID-19 vaccine must be considered a global public good. Duterte signs into a law a 165.5 billion pesos or 3.4 billion US dollar, an emergency relief measure to expand health care and help businesses after the coronavirus pandemic plunge the economy into recession. As the country grapples with the highest number of COVID-19 infections in Southeast Asia, the law also allots 25.5 billion pesos to hire nurses, doctors, purchase protective gear, and build medical facilities. A standby fund of 10 billion pesos can find the government purchases of COVID-19 vaccines. The Philippines is in talks with Russia, China, Australia, and the United States for the potential supply of COVID-19 vaccines. We must remain mindful of our obligation and commitment to the Charter of the United Nations. And as amplified by the 1982 Manila Declaration on the Peaceful Settlement of International Disputes, the Philippines affirms that commitment in the South China Sea in accordance with UNCLOS and the 2016 Arbitral Award. In a bulletin of the Ministry of Health says total confirmed infections in the Philippines are increased to 291,789, while deaths have reached to 5,049. Brunei Prime Minister praises achievements of the United Nations on conflicts. The Prime Minister Hassan al bolkiah applauds the achievements of the United Nations on the 75th anniversary, mentioning its achievements in resolving conflicts, but also calling it far from perfect. Over the years, we have faced many challenges and were able to resolve conflicts in Bosnia, Timor-Leste, and closer still to us in ASEAN, in Cambodia. However, the question of Palestine, terrorism, achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, and many others remain work in progress. And now we are facing new unprecedented challenges in our lifetime, like climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic. If history has taught us anything, it is that we could not have realized such achievements without the strong support and commitment from all nations. Not by abandoning the UN when it becomes politically difficult, but by working together and by seeking convergence, both at the national 
and international levels. The UN is far from perfect, and the cost of maintaining it continues to rise every year. The United Nations mark anniversary as the deadly coronavirus pandemic and tensions between the United States and China challenge the effectiveness and solidarity of the 193 member body. The special event comes ahead of the annual meeting of world leaders at the United Nations, which starts but no presidents or prime ministers physically present in New York. The United Nations was created when countries came together after World War II to prevent another such conflict where there has not been World War III, leaders adopt a statement acknowledging moments of disappointment. The suspect with initial CC escaped from prison. Indonesian police says they are on a hunt for a Chinese prisoner on death row who escaped by tunneling through the prison's sewage system and currently they conducting an investigation deliberation on the part of the authorities involved in his escape. They also plan to distribute leaflets and photographs of Chai to the public. The team has been pointed at several location points that are possible hiding places of the escaped prisoner. As of now, we are still pursuing him. Internally, we are also conducting an investigation in the prison environment as to whether there was an element of negligence or deliberation involved in his escape which we will update you on later again. Chai Changpang is a convict of methamphetamine smuggling dug a 30 meter tunnel from his cell at the prison in Tangerang district into waste pipes and onto a road outside. Police says, according to the Indonesian news website detik.com, Chai was sentenced to death in 2017 for trafficking 135 kilograms of crystal meth a police investigation found 70 kilograms of meth hidden in chicken coop cleaner equipment. Chai, police said, had previously broken out of a Jakarta police detention center in 2017 by breaking a hole in the bathroom wall. Chinese government reopened entry to foreign nationals after lockdown. China announces reopens its entry to foreign nationals holding three categories of valid Chinese residence permits. The activity will be a work together of Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the National Immigration Administration. Currently, they focus for COVID-19 situation and the need of epidemic prevention and control. Temporarily, they suspend the entry of foreign nationals holding valid Chinese visas or residence permits issues. The activities will starting in the end of the month for foreign nationals holding valid Chinese residence permits for work, personal matters and reunions are allowed to enter China with no need for applying for new visas. The above mentions personnel shall strictly abide by the Chinese regulations on health protocol. Other measures in the announcements issued in March will be continued to apply. The Chinese government will continue resuming people-to-people -people exchanges in a step-by-step -step and orderly manner while ensuring effective epidemic control. Myanmar football field becomes an isolation area for COVID-19 patients. Myanmar authorities in Yangon start converting a football field into a makeshift hospital for treating COVID-19 patients as infections across in the country are raised. The number of positive cases keeps getting higher. It's difficult for us, government, to have more places for patients because hospitals are full with limited access to the resources due to more people infected with the virus. We have no more places to accommodate a huge outbreak. The situation will get worse if we can't accept a patient. That's why we are building the shelters urgently. Three township hospitals in Yangon have already been transformed to specially treat COVID-19 patients and the makeshift hospital are approved for construction after a new spike in the infections hit Situe and Rakhine states in the northern part of the country. According to the Count Miat Asoe, chief of Tuuna Field Hospital, the new facility will be able to take in 416 patients in total. We are installing 104 wards in one shelter to place 416 patients in four shelters. We will have the suspected patients who are not in serious conditions in these shelters. So far, Myanmar reports 3,299 coronavirus cases. Myanmar citizens stay at home to prevent COVID-19. 
a stay-at-home order for Myanmar's biggest city due to a steady spike in new COVID-19 cases. I believe the government's stay-at-home announcement is good for this mall. There could be multiple infections in this mall because thousands of people come here every day. This control will be effective. More or less, if not restricted, the situation will become catastrophic. Other residents say most people allowed to health protocol because over 10 people are test positive for the pandemic each day. Most of the people are not following the restriction rules. People look scared, but they are not careful of the infection. They think that the virus will not infect them. But I see that today fewer people are going out on the streets than the other days because of the government's announcement last night. Now people are scared of the government's restrictions announcement. Each day, five or seven people are tested positive for coronavirus in our district. I believe that the tighter the restrictions, the less people will be COVID positive. The situation will be chaotically uncontrollable if the rules are not stringent enough. So far, Myanmar reports 5,541 COVID-19 cases and 92 deaths with 671 new infections. The Korean Disease Control and Prevention Agency suspends the flu vaccine program because of problem with the distribution process. South Korea suspends its free influenza vaccination programs aimed to reducing healthcare system strain by persistent coronavirus outbreaks after reports the storage problems occurs during distribution of the flu shots. Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency decided to temporarily suspend the country influenza vaccination programs until the quality is verified, which plan to start from today after report case of the influenza vaccines that are exposed to inadequate refrigeration temperature during the distribution. The country is facing a resurgence of COVID-19 cases, plan to produce 20 more percent flu vaccines for this winter season to immunize 30 million people and start free inoculation for some 19 million eligible people. Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency Chief Jong Yong Kyung tells a briefing while the flu shots have to be refrigerated, it is reported the refrigerate van exposes some of the doses to room temperature while moving to the medical facility. The authorities are looking into the entire 5 million doses that are scheduled for distribution. Thailand protester put black as a symbolic of monarchy. Thailand protesters install a plaque in the field opposite the Grand Palace in Bangkok, describing the message that Thailand belongs to the people and not to the monarch. The installation of the plaque is for everyone to be aware that we want to have a true democracy given back to us to reform the monarchy institution and truly keep the institutions under a democratic constitution. It is the latest challenge to the monarchy of King Mahavajira Rongkong after tens of thousands of people joined the biggest protest. The taboo subject of the protest is to reform the monarchy institution. In the plaque right, at this place that people have expressed their will, and that this country belongs to the people and is not the property of the monarch as they have deceived us. Government exposement Anuncha Burapachaisri says police can't use violence against protesters. It is up to them to determine and prosecute any illegal speech. Vietnamese police carry out inspection are able to identify used condom. A state media report Vietnam's police raid a warehouse are find recycling and reselling used condoms. State broadcaster VTV carry footage showing dozens of large bags containing used condoms scatters across the warehouse in southern Binh Duong province just after the raid. Binh Duong police says a total of 300 kilograms, an equivalent to 345,000 used condoms, are found in the warehouse. One woman who are detained in the operation tells police that used condoms are boiling water before they are sold on the markets. She paid $17 per kilogram of recycled condom, washes, dries and reshapes. Chinese and United Nations discusses cooperation on multilateralism and COVID-19. 
In video conference, she urges the international community to reaffirm their support for multilateralism and abiding commitment to the United Nations Charter, firmly support the key leadership of the UN system, especially the World Health Organization in battling the pandemic. The UN system in strengthening international cooperation in COVID-19 prevention and containment. The chief state adds the COVID-19 pandemic have magnified the problems of maladaptation and mismatch in the global governance system. He also calls on all countries to rise above differences between countries, nationalities, cultures and ideologies to promote building a community with a shared future for humanity. During the video conference, Guterres expresses his gratitude over China's consistent and firm support for multilateralism and the UN. He highly comments a series of important initiatives and measures she announced at the UN General Assembly in spheres of practicing multilateralism, coping with climate change and promoting sustainable development. United Nations support for China efforts to push for jointly building a Silk Road of green development. In addition, Guterres says the UN supports China in deepening cooperation with Africa and developing countries, and the UN hopes to continue strengthening cooperation with China and expect China to play a leading role. Well, this is the end of today's episode. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you again.